Hey everybody, Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician from Human 2.0. And today I'm going to talk to you about one of the most important things that you need to do after knee surgery. And what I'm talking about is full knee extension and why you need to have it. So after knee surgery, it's common that people have stiffness in their knee. This is something that I see all the time with my patients postoperatively. And one of the most important things that I tell them is that they need to achieve a full range of motion. And the full range of motion includes both knee flexion and knee extension. And of those two, knee extension is the most important. See, this is something that seems almost counterintuitive because most people spend the most of their time postoperatively trying to get back full knee flexion. But it's the extension that is the most important thing. And there are several reasons why that is the case. The first reason why full knee extension is important is because you want to have leg length symmetry. Leg length symmetry, meaning that both legs are the same length, means that you will be able to keep your pelvis level when you stand and when you walk. Also, you want to achieve full knee extension so that you have a normal gait pattern. When you are walking, both legs need to be the same length and you need to have similar ranges of motion at the knees, ankles, and the hips on both sides. If one leg is functionally shorter than the other because you do not yet have full knee extension, then when you are walking, and in particular, just as you do your heel strike, this will cause you to have an abnormal and an imbalanced gait. The third reason why you want to have full knee extension is because you want to make sure that you can minimize the amount of swelling that you have in the lower extremity. I often have patients who come to me and tell me that their therapists have said, oh, I need to do A, B, or C modality in order to get rid of the swelling. If you think about your heart as a high pressure pump, you have a high pressure pump located in your chest which pumps blood down under high pressure, 120 millimeters of mercury to be exact, down to your lower extremities. The blood goes down to your muscles and the oxygen from that blood is extracted by the muscles. The blood then has to come back up through a low pressure system back to your heart because there is no heart down there to pump that blood back up. So instead of your heart, your body uses a system which is called the muscular pump. And this pump system works best when the muscles in your lower extremity are working properly, when you are walking. So in order for the muscular pump, which is a low pressure pump, to work properly, all of the muscles in your lower extremity need to be working properly. And for them to be working properly, you need to be walking properly. So, if we want to restore a normal, balanced, and symmetrical gait, then we need to make sure that we have a range of motion that is symmetrical to our unaffected side. People often ask, well, why is the one leg swollen and not the other? The answer is really very simple. In the non-operated leg, your muscular pump is working effectively. So that pump is working at full capacity. In the operated leg, your muscular pump is working less effectively than it is on the non-operative side. So therefore, this pump can't keep up with that pump. And this pump makes sure that there is no swelling in the lower extremity. This pump, which can only function at a fraction of the, the capacity of the other pump, causes this leg to become swollen progressively over time. The fourth reason why you need to get back full extension is because it actually helps your flexion. If you have full extension in that leg, it means that number one, you're walking properly. Number two, your muscular pump are working effectively. So there will be less swelling in the lower extremity. And if there is less swelling in the lower extremity, then flexion of that knee will actually be easier than it would be if you had swelling in that extremity. The fifth reason why it's important for you to get back full knee extension after surgery is because it actually helps with your quadricep activation. Typically, after we perform surgery on the leg, depending on the appro surgical approach that we've used, you will often find that the quadricep 
goes on vacation. The quadricep will be weak and it will be very difficult to activate the quadricep. Part of our rehabilitative efforts after knee surgery are for you to restore normal quadricep function. And by that, I mean normal quadricep muscle activation. In other words, when your brain sends a signal down to your quadricep to contract, it actually does that. And then normal quadricep recruitment. When your brain is telling it to contract and it wants all 100 units to contract at the same time, then all 100 units do so. With full knee extension, we allow the quadricep to be at its shortest length so that when we are working on establishing or re-establishing control of the quadricep muscle, it is in the ideal situation in which to do so. We can first start with isometric contractions, that is contractions where the muscle does not actually change length, and then over time we can progress to isotonic and then eccentric muscle contractions of the quadriceps. Restoring full extension of the knee is the first step to make sure that we can gain back active control of the quadricep muscle. The last reason why it's important for you to gain back full extension after knee surgery is because of overall stability of the knee. A fully extended knee is a stable configuration and it is this way for a number of reasons. One, because of the configuration of the bones, two, the surrounding ligaments, and three, the muscle tissue around the knee, which contribute to both static stability and dynamic stability. You can spend less time in the bent knee position than you can in the straight leg position. Why is that? Because the bent knee position is a less stable position and it requires more work. If you want to restore the stability of somebody's leg functionally and subjectively, meaning what you actually feel, we want to make sure that we reestablish the full leg extension or full knee extension. It'll help when you stand, it will help when you walk, it'll help when you do anything after that. When I talk about knee extension, I need to make sure that we are all on the same page. When I say full knee extension, I mean knee extension or slight degree of hyperextension that is symmetrical to what is on the other side. Some of you might ask whether this is important for all knee surgeries. And unless there is a specific contraindication or a specific reason why your surgeon does not want you to obtain full knee extension, then I would say that this is important for all knee surgeries. And this is certainly something that I encourage all of my patients to obtain postoperatively. Another thing which is very important when you go to get back your full knee extension is that there will be a certain amount of discomfort that is associated with this. And this is entirely normal. I repeat, there will be a certain amount of discomfort that is associated with you obtaining full knee extension after surgery. And this is normal. I wouldn't say that it's normal for you to be in excruciating pain, but the way that I describe it to my patients is this. On a scale of zero to 10, with zero being no pain whatsoever, and 10 being the worst pain imaginable, I mean where you would pay me money to cut the extremity off with a rusty butter knife right now. So on a scale of zero to 10, you may experience discomfort in the range of about six to seven when you are working on this. And in my eyes, six or seven is something where there'll be a little tear coming out of the corner of your eye. You're not downright bawling, but it's really, it's uncomfortable. Like it's uncomfortable enough that you kind of have to breathe deeply through it. And you have to kind of wish that I'd shut up so that you can concentrate on it that's a six or a seven on a 10 scale. So that's the kind of discomfort that you can expect when you're working through these kinds of things. And it's really, really, really rather important that you use active therapy to help obtain full knee extension after surgery. By that, I mean therapy where you, the patient, are the one doing the maneuver or doing the exercise which is helping to restore full knee extension. 
if you have somebody who's putting machines on you, or you have somebody who's moving your leg or manipulating your leg to help you to obtain the full knee extension, and you haven't learned how to do this yourself, when you step outside the therapist's gym or the therapist's office, you're gonna be in a world of trouble. So it's very important that you learn how to do this yourself. And certainly, your therapist can help to guide you through this, but in the end, you are the one that needs to be doing this. You are the one that needs to be fixing yourself. You are the one that needs to be doing the active rehabilitation. With all that being said, we're gonna to get to the exercise. And before I show you those things, I wanna remind you of one thing, and that is that details matter. The small things matter. Oftentimes, patients will come back to me and they'll say, I have full knee extension. I, I, I have it. My therapist told me that I have it. But when we check, they don't really have it. They don't have full symmetrical knee extension to their unoperative side. To reiterate, details matter. And we'll show you what I mean in just a minute. So for the first exercise that I'm going to show you, you'll need a TheraBand, approximately two inches in width. And the reason why we'll need this one is because you need to have a certain amount of tension on the band when you perform these exercises. So for the first exercise, I'll show you two variations. One to help you obtain first passive extension, and then once you have passive extension and your quadricep has started to come back online, I'll show you a variant which will then allow you to work on active knee extension. First, you'll need to attach your TheraBand to something that is an immovable object. It doesn't have to be a jerk box or anything like this. It can be a weight rack, it can be the stair banister, but you want to attach it to something that is solid that is not going to move. So you're going to make a loop like this, and you're going to step inside the loop with the operative leg. You're going to place the band approximately one to two inches below the bottom of your kneecap. You do not want the band to be going above the kneecap and you do not want it directly over the kneecap. Then you're going to walk out with the band until ugh, you can feel a good amount of tension. You can feel the band pulling you back. You're going to take both feet, place them beside each other. You're going to make sure that your pelvis is square because obviously this leg is going to be pulled back by the band. So you want to rotate your pelvis so that your pelvis is square, your feet are square, and that your shoulders are square. You're going to lean forward slightly. Not so much that you fall over, but you're going to lean forward slightly. And don't worry, the band is going to help to stabilize you to some degree. And you're going to squeeze your glutes, squeeze your butt to keep yourself in line and you're just going to stand in this position. If you have a stopwatch, a clock, or your iPhone, you're gonna put your timer on, and you're basically gonna sit in this position for one to two minutes at a time. When you first start this exercise, you probably won't be able to tolerate two minutes, so you'll start out at 30 seconds, and then over time, you'll work your way up to two minutes. And the whole time, you're going to feel tension in the back of the leg as the band pulls your leg into full extension and this is going to stretch out the hamstring, the calf behind the joint and the posterior capsule of the knee, all of which are tight after you've had knee surgery. So you're going to do this probably two to three times each time you do this. For my own patients, I advise them to do this twice a day for two to three reps, each for one to two minutes with a minute or two rest in between. And so after you've done this, you're going to step back slowly with your unoperative leg and then take the tension off the operative leg. And you don't want to do it the other way around, otherwise you're going to be somewhere over there and you're going to fall. Once you have achieved full passive extension of the knee, and I'll show you a way to figure that out after this, then you can do the active extension variant of this. So to do that, all you're going to do is turn around in the opposite direction and do the same thing. Now, with this variant, 
Again, you want to make sure that your feet are beside one another and that your pelvis is square. With this variant, the band is now going to be pulling your knee forward. So what you'll want to do is actively contract the quad to bring the knee into full extension. So this will help you to restore and to further develop quadricep strength and quadricep contractile ability after knee surgery. So for this, you can either do a static hold with your quadricep contracted, or you can do repetitions of knee extension and quadricep contraction. And if you're going to do the static version, then once again, you'll work to hold for time. And you can start out with 30 seconds and then work your way up to 60 seconds. If you're doing the contractile version, then you can work to do three sets of 10. And once again, this is something that I would prescribe to my patients to do twice a day. When you're done, you can bend the knee, walk forward slowly until the tension is off, and then you can step on the band. Now, I'm gonna show you one more exercise that you can use to both assess whether you have yet achieved full knee extension, and by that I mean full symmetrical knee extension to the operative side, that you can also use to achieve full knee extension after knee surgery. And for that, we're gonna need a table or an examination bed, something that we can lay on. So for this last exercise, you're gonna to wanna to have a table that you can lay on, and this can be an examination table like this, but you're gonna want it to have a firm edge. So this is not something that you're gonna be able to do on your bed because the cushion or the mattress would be too soft and it will not be effective. You wanna have something which actually has a firm surface that you can press against while you're um, doing this. So first I'm gonna show you how to assess whether you have full knee extension, and then I'll show you the exercise in this position that you can use to help further your knee extension or further obtain full knee extension after knee surgery. So to assess whether you have full knee extension, you're gonna to wanna to bring your knees to the end of the table so that the top of your kneecap is hanging off the end of the table and that your thighs are fully supported by the hard surface. Then you're going to want to hang your feet down. What you'll want to do is have somebody look from the end of the table at the bottom of your feet to see whether your heel height, the top of your heels, are at the same position. If you have, uh, if you've had knee surgery and you don't yet have full knee extension, you'll see that there is a heel height difference. In other words, one heel will be higher than the other. And to assess this, you want yourself or the person who you are assessing to be fully relaxed so that their legs are hanging down as much as is possible. Then you'll be able to see the uh, amount of knee extension that is lacking in the operative leg. And once again, you can see this because there's a difference in the heel height. So obviously in this case, my right leg would be the operative leg and there would be a heel height difference. So this is the quick and easy way in which you can determine if you have yet to obtain full knee extension after surgery. So from this, I'm gonna show you a easy exercise that you can use to help obtain full knee extension while in this position. So, there are two variations of this exercise. If my right leg is the operative leg and it has the extension deficit, I can simply cross my heel over onto that leg because this is the non-operative leg with full extension, cross my heel over and then use that leg to push down to the floor. And once again, there will be a bit of discomfort with this, and I want you to be in a range of 6 to 7 out of 10. 
you are working for time here, so although it is uncomfortable, you're going to try to hold it for as long as possible. I tell my patients to aim for one to two minutes. Initially, when they start, they can usually only hold it for about 15 seconds, pushing down. But over time, they can work up to 30 seconds, 45 seconds, a minute, and then two minutes. So that's the first variation. Once you are able to do so comfortably, then we want to make sure that we can get all of the extension. And rather than crossing the heel over, you can take the toes of your non-operative leg to press down on the heel of your operative side to get even more extension in that knee. And once again, you would repeat the process. Start out with 15 seconds, work your way up to 30, 45, 60 seconds, and then two minutes. So as I said before, you'll need to check with your surgeon to make sure that there are no contraindications or no reasons why you shouldn't be working to obtain full knee extension after surgery, and also when you can start this. For my own patients, I usually have them start this immediately after surgery. So there you have it. I've given you some reasons why it's important for you to obtain full knee extension after surgery, and I've given you some very simple and easy exercises that you can do on your own at home or at the gym to obtain full knee extension after knee surgery. As always, Dr. Chris signing off from Human 2.0, where we build better humans.